So you fully UV'd your model. As you can see here, we're still only working on one side of the model initially. And what, I'll, what I've also done is set this up as a temporary scene because the UVs aren't going to change now. We can bake out the maps from this scene, do what we like in this scene, and then discard it. So just to make things easier for this process, combine your torso into a single model and combine your limbs into a single model as well. And as you can see, we have our UVs in this first 0, 1 grid square here, which is where our main texture page is going to be generated. The same for the limbs. And again, we're only working on one half of the limbs because the maps that are going to be output can also be mirrored across from this side to this side. So again, rather than doing twice the work, we'll just work on one side and then mirror it across to the other. So while we have our model in, in, uh, in Maya, like I said, before we go into Photoshop, we're going to bake out a few textures and that will give us a good head start to generating our texture maps. The first texture we're going to generate is an occlusion map. Um, and what this is going to do is bake out all the global illumination, um, the, sort of the ambient lighting associated with the model. So it's going to add more depth to the model and everything's going to sit nicely with each other. You'll see that what I mean uh, as we as we uh, get going. So let's close that down. Um, so what we need to do first, again, something else that uh, Maya doesn't work well with, um, with smooth mesh, is baking out textures. So what we need to do first is just make sure smooth mesh is enabled, just double check that smooth all is set on your map borders. Smooth UVs, smooth all. That's right. Now we need to bake in these subdivisions. Now rather than going in and using a smooth, we can go to modify, convert, smooth mesh, preview to polygons. So we'll do that there. Press G just to repeat that process. And then we'll just do a delete by type history just to clean those up. So as you can see, that top that geometry has just been baked into the model, which will just give us a nicer result. Um, if we don't do that, then Maya will only work off the low resolution proxy model. So you'll end up with some nasty artifacts uh, and basically a rubbish looking occlusion map. What we're also going to do is we're going to duplicate this limb, scale it across minus one. Now that doesn't really matter, that's just there as a placeholder. And that is because as we're generating lighting information on the torso, we want it to think that these limbs are there so that it's going to add in the shadows and things around here. Again, we're only going to be baking out one side of the limb, but you need that extra model there to get that lighting information as if it was part of the model anyway. What we're also going to do is create a plane. So we've got sort of a floor there. And our model's floating off the floor a little bit. What I'm going to do is just move this down so he's not actually sitting on the floor. So the underneath of the feet won't be completely black, but they will be dark. And what this also does is allows the photons, which will be working out the occlusion pass, to bounce off the floor and up. So you'll get a lot better lighting underneath the model because you've got this acting as that sort of uh, shadow area. So rather than being floating in the sky, it's, it will be as if it's actually sitting on the floor. So that's the preparation done. So let's now go in and start working on our baking out our occlusion map. So what we need to do first, we'll just work on the torso uh, initially and you can do the same for the limbs. Uh, we're going to go to rendering, lighting shading, assign new bake set. And we want to do a, bake, a texture bake set because we're baking out the texture. That assigns that to the torso. And then we can come down here and we can adjust the name. We can adjust the resolution. So let's say 1024 by 1024. We're going to increase the number of samples to 2. 
and it's always good to fill your texture seams but sometimes it doesn't really work so it's uh, um, well it's always good to add it in and just see how it how it goes so that's all you need to set in there I mean let's put in a name um, torso occlusion bake like so light and color is fine so that's all set but now we know what's going to bake we need to tell it what to bake uh, if you sort of get what I mean and to do this we need to assign a surface shader to the torso and that's just going to make it black and at the moment all that will do is bake out that black so now we want to tell it what uh, what sort of map we want it to bake out so in out color we're just going to go in here go down to textures and select this mib amb occlusion now we're going to set max distance to 10 and that's just going to tighten the amount of fall off you get from your occlusion map and samples I would probably leave that as 16 initially bake out a map just to see how it looks and then turn up the samples um, I used 1 to 8 and that will bake out a higher quality map but it's obviously going to take a lot longer and obviously if we go to our texture bake set the higher the resolution the longer it's going to take to bake as well so maybe just do a test run first on a lower resolution map maybe keep it at 512 make sure it's all working and then you can ramp up the settings so that's all set what you need to do now is just select the model light in shading batch bake open up these options set it to single object because you're only baking one object enable bake shadows all you do then is click convert now it's going to take a while to generate this occlusion map so what I'm going to do is we'll pretend we've clicked convert on that what you do then is you go through and do repeat the whole process but on this just this one limb here that will go through uh, and uh, do all the uh, calculations and spit out another map so I've already got one here that I've worked on and piped up earlier so this is sort of what you get and if I turn off the lighting switch that to use no lighting so this is all just the texture now as you can see we've got this nice shading underneath here where we've got the uh, shadowing coming from the torso down to these areas here we've got the shadowing here where this piston is quite close to this arm area here we've got a slight issue with a, uh, a seam here but we can fix that later we don't need to worry about that that's what I was saying earlier even though some sometimes even though you fill in fill texture seams it just seems to ignore it and uh, not do it anyway but like I said there's an easy way to fix those seams but that is just the occlusion map baked if we look underneath you can see underneath the feet are quite dark and that's because we added in this floor plane which allowed us to bake out um, yeah, which gave us that uh, shadowing under the feet. If that show, if that floor plane wasn't there, the underneath of the feet would be light, as if it was floating in the sky. So if we go to, I'll just have a look at the maps. So this is what the maps look like when they're output, and they've followed the uh, the UV layout. You can see here we have our dark areas where objects are intersecting with other objects, but that's that's just what we wanted because that's how the objects are. We've got our shadowing underneath here. And here's our limbs one. And because the left and right side are identical, they're just mirrored, we can duplicate this, mirror it across, and fill in this side. So it, rather than doing twice the amount of calculations, we can just use one side. So let's go back to Maya. So that's the first map outputted, and that's going to give us our lighting and just give the texture a lot more depth and it didn't take long to uh, to set up an output and it's just going to give you texture um, it's just going to give it a lot more life so the next one we're going to look at 
is creating a basic diffuse pass. And all we do for this, if I just hide that, let's just delete that flaw because we no longer want it. Now I'm just going to turn this on. All this is, is our basic model again, but we've just gone through and added basic shaders. Now, if we just look at the shaders, all it is is a basic blin, a uh, basic fong, sorry. You could have a Lambert, but all it is is a, a yellow fong. The glass is a blue fong. The black areas are a black fong, although that's just off black, just so it's not so deep and dark. You just work your way around the model, dictating these large main areas of colour. And what's good about doing it this way is you can, these areas of model in here, you can assign per polygon um, different shades of colour or different colours and those will be baked out as well. Like we have with the feet here, this bit's grey, this bit's yellow. So it's just working with those polygons, just dictating those main colours. So once you've got your colours set, again, we need to bake those out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the model that we used for um, our occlusion map. Let's just see what materials applied to that. It's just yeah, loader base material, just to fix that back to where it was before. So this time, you need a model that you're going to bake from which will be the model that's got all our colour information on and we need a model we're going to bake to. So we'll use this model as the model, sort of our destination model and this is going to be our source model. And again, we're going to bake in those uh, smooth mesh subdivisions. So modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons, modify, I'll just press G just to repeat the last command. Delete by type history. So we have our colour version and we have our version that we're baking on to. So let's go to lighting shading, transfer maps for this one. Let's just move that over there. So in this window here, we can basically transfer various different bits various different bits of information between models so you can generate normal maps so you can use this to generate a normal map from a high resolution model to a low resolution model they don't have to be the same model the same resolution um, we're just using it for this because all we're going to do is bake out a diffuse map so we'll set that there we'll just set a temporary name so uh, loader torso diffuse bake like so so you specify the map that's going to be baked out like so so this we know is going to be our target mesh let's just move that out of the way for a second it's loading our color model select this and this is going to be our source mesh so click on there Move that over. Let's just bring back our destination model again. So this is what it's going to be baked onto. Let's just isolate this. And this procedure can be repeated exactly the same for the uh, the limbs. Let's just scroll down. Again, you can set your map width, map height. Transferring world space is fine. Filter size. Again, fill texture seams if you want to. So again, like we did with the occlusion map, it's always worth running a preview just to see how it's going to look before you increase your map size and your sampling quality. So let's just let's just do a quick bake now and see how this looks. We want it to connect to a new shader as well. That shouldn't take too long. And there, that has output a texture. So we're not looking at a the polygons which are coloured now, we're actually looking at the texture, which is
which has been baked from the colour model and applied to this. Now remember this is only a 256 by 256 map so we are going to get issues like this but in general that worked quite well. So all we need to do now is just turn up our map width and height maybe 1024 by 1024 and increase our sampling quality if we want to get a nicer bake. So maybe set it to medium or high. Now obviously that's going to take a lot longer to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to again let's just turn off isolate selected here's one which we've done previously and if we go back to our image viewer so this is the diffuse map which was exported for the torso and this is the gone for the limbs and again it's exactly the same we're just going to mirror it in Photoshop and we've got both sides done. If you look we have got these little uh, errors here but that's where those pipes are intersecting with the model so that black colour has been baked and brought through. If I zoom in you can see there but they're just very very minor issues and if you think about it they're going to be covered by the pipes anyway so nobody's really going to see them. So those are the diffuse maps exported and applied. And again, if I turn off the lighting, we could just see that's just that basic colour. Again, we've got this slight issue with the seam here, but we can we're going to fix that next, so that's not an issue. So now we have our occlusion and we have our diffuse. Those two maps are really going to help us kickstart our texturing. So let's jump into Photoshop now and just have a quick look at how we're going to start using those and how they're going to affect the look of the model. Just switch to Photoshop. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So what we have here, where's our toolbar? It's right over here. There we go. What we have here is our diffuse, just zoom that back out, we have our diffuse which is here, our occlusion which is here and again I'm just going to focus on the torso because it's exactly the same process for the limbs and I've also created a UV snapshot. This is just going to guide us and tell us where our UVs are, go are, well, are. Now first of all I like to get rid of our, any sort of issues we may have with uh, seams and what's happening is the black is bleeding through to the yellow and that's why we're getting those sort of texture seams. So let's just duplicate that background colour there. What we need to do first is just strip these down so there's nothing apart from the um, the main material, the main texture that we need. Now what we could do is just set our tolerance to zero, turn off anti-aliasing, turn off contagious and just see how that selection works. And That should just select that black background colour and nothing else and it has which has worked quite well. What I'm going to do now is just select, modify, expand that by two pixels. Now depending on the size of the map you may only want to expand by one pixel. So what I'm going to do is select the so for the diffuse I'm just going to delete that go up to the occlusion and delete that. So as you can see the areas which aren't actually textured are now transparent. So now I'm just going to fill those in. I'm just going to go to filter flaming pair now this is something that you can download online they're absolutely free um, there's lots of other plugins that come with this package but I really like these because they're just, they're just perfect for fixing texture seams and rather than just doing it at the beginning like we are now I always do it right at the very end when I finish the texture just to double check and make sure there's no seams so flaming pair and these solidifies um, will work slightly differently but I'm just going to do solidify A like so just let it work its magic as you can see what it's done is it's bleeded, it's sort of taken the edge pixels 
and, and sort of bleeded them into each other, bled them into each other. Let's just uh, image adjust, let's just invert that, turn that to multiply, and then we can see through our UV. Let's just zoom in a little bit here, just so we can see. So as you can see here, this grey has now been bled out to the black. The, ye the black has bled out to the yellow. And we can do the same for the occlusion map. Filter, flaming pair, solidify A. And there, that has just softened the edges of that occlusion map as well. So that's a good way to fix texture seams. So let's just zoom out again. I'm just going to move this a little bit over here, just very slightly, just so we can see the full map. So now we have those, we need to sort of think about how we're going to blend these together. So I'm just going to duplicate the occlusion map. The first one I'm going to set to multiply and reduce the opacity to 50%. Oops, let's move that back over so you can see. Like so. The next one, I'm going to set this one to soft light. And again, I'm going to reduce that to 50%. And as you can see, what we've got now is the occlusion Let's just show you those two separately. So this is soft light, and it's almost burn, giving you a burnt out colour, but it's giving you this lighting as well, and also darkening those areas. You could use overlay if you want it a little bit stronger, but it's entirely up to you. So soft light, overlay. We'll leave it at soft light for now, because we're going to use this next layer set to multiply, and that's just going to darken those darker areas, those sort of shadowy areas, a little bit more. So there, a few simple steps, and we've basically got the starting uh, blocks for our texture. We can save this out now, um, and then we can just continue to work on top of this and add in more details and start to work in our grain and our dirt and our rust and things like that. So let's just switch back to photo. Uh, Maya, sorry. And here we have the combined version. And as you can see, those texture seams have gone. There's a slight one there, but that could be just because Maya's viewport is uh, reducing the texture size, so you're getting a little bit of bleed through there. We've got a seam here, but remember, this is the very early stages of this texture. We could always uh, touch those up in Photoshop and fix them anyway. So if I just compare, this is before, this is the diffuse, and this is the diffuse and the occlusion map combined. So as you can see, we've got a lot more depth to this, and it looks a lot more solid. So with that done, the next stages are now to just focus purely on the textures and just go straight into Photoshop and just start building up um, the details and the dirt and the rust. Let's just turn off, turn on default lighting. Just see the difference between just the diffuse and it still looks quite flat. Whereas that, it's just got that extra bit of depth. Let's just see if we can have both in the scene at the same time. Compare like this. So here we go, the, just the diffuse and then the diffuse with the, the ambient occlusion applied to it. So I'm going to leave things there. We've explored baking out your various maps and applying them in Photoshop, multiplying them, layering them up, and also fixing some of the, the texture seams using that Flaming Pair plugin. So, that's it for this video. In the next video, we will start to explore um, and working more on our textures and adding in the dirt and the rust and the worn away edges.